Um, I went home to visit my nephew. He's an 11 year old gamer. He's been gaming for uh, about three years now. My sister, like a lot of single black moms, was concerned about him spending so much time um, during this pandemic on his video game in his room on his on his computer, you know, gaming and and not you know interacting and out playing those traditional sports, uh, you know. And as a five six year old, eleven year old, you know, in a family of traditional sports athletes, you know, she she's been pushing the family has been pushing him to go to traditional sports, but you know, he's mm-hmm. not interested. Uh, he's a straight A student, and uh, she was concerned about who and he was talking to. She would hear conversations, him talking to people on the computer. And I was home for his 11th birthday, and she said, you know, I need you to go talk to him. You play video games. And creating a Black Collegiate Gaming Association was a full, um, you know, 360-degree moment for me. But to listen to him talk about wanting to get scholarships and mm-hmm. go to school and play and until he was old like me, you mm-hmm. know, work in the industry, and then also wanting to play on, on the esports teams and mm-hmm. be a professional gamer. Mm-hmm. And as I watched, and, and he started showing me the individuals he was, you know, following and also the schools where he wanted to go to play, uh, none of the schools were HBCUs and mm. our entire family are proud HBCU graduates. Mm. I'm my, my brother, sisters, parents. So, you know, it was, it was, you know, I was like, there's something wrong with this picture. It's like, and all the professional gamers you're following, mm-hmm. they don't look like you. And mm. more importantly, they don't look like me, mm. you or your mom. And I'm like, that doesn't concern you. And, you know, as an 11 year old, he was like, gamers, we don't see color. We don't care about color. You know, and everybody worked and played with are overseas. And so, you know, and he was like, um, I didn't see any HBCUs that offered scholarships, mm. didn't have gaming, you know, didn't have gaming labs or arenas like these cool schools. They're not offering degrees. He's like, so why would I go to an HBCU? Mm. And I said, that's, that's concerning. I said, especially in 2020 mm-hmm. that we don't have at least a single HBCU out of 97 accredited schools uh, that could provide you with a you know, degree and the opportunity to play. I mm. said, so I'm going to do something to change that. My name is Dr. Mark Williams. Welcome to my masterclass. I have a PhD in education from West Virginia University. I have a master's in sport management and an MBA from the University of Massachusetts. I even have an undergraduate degree in sociology from William Patterson University. And currently, I'm the global scholar practitioner at HBCU, Florida Memorial University. But I also work for three of the largest sports brands in the world, Reebok, Champ Sports, and Foot Action. But I can't go anywhere without my Jordan 1s. Join me and my guests as we explore their rise to the top through adversity and challenges, it's time to help you find a hero in you. Welcome to my masterclass. Hello, everyone. How you doing? What's up? Even though my fans over there in LinkedIn, Facebook, and what's the other thing? Oh, call Twitter. Yeah, we own that thing too. But we're also over here, and we're also here with my good friend, Keisha Walker. The sound effects, sound effects, sound effects. See, y'all are getting a sneak peek preview, sneak peek. You're not going to get everything. We're showing you a little bit about what we're doing on my show. Okay, this is what I do on my podcast, Dr. Mark's Mark's Masterclass Podcast. Yes, Dr. Mark's Masterclass Podcast. Yeah, in Dallas. What am I doing in Dallas? I'm at Florida Memorial University. And what? South Florida? The only HBCU in South Florida. But see, Keisha, she comes from FAMU. That's another part of Florida in Tallahassee. Then you got uh, Bethune Cookman. But that's in what? Ta- that, that's in Daytona. Yeah, yeah. Then you got Everest Waters. Where, where they at? Uh, Jacksonville. Jacksonville. So we got four black colleges in four different cities. But I'm at Florida Memorial. You know, I got the Superman outfit. I got on the A5 all the time. A5 A- all day. But this sister right here, she's part of the Divine Nine. Tell everybody who you represent. Delta Sigma Theta, 1913. DST, you know what I'm saying? So nothing but it's all about fire and ice up in here today. All right. So we're not going to show you the whole show. We're just going to give you a sneak peek at what I do. Okay. And I got some amazing people. I got Aaron and Sia. You know, they are my producers. Two women, two amazing women. And I got AJ on the wheels of steel. He makes me sound good. You know what I mean? No, I said, you know what I mean? Yeah, I know I got a PhD, but I said, I said like that there. All right. Anyway, I've been in the South too long. That's why I talk like that there. But that's not really how I talk. I'm from Jersey. You know what I mean? Son, (laughs) Ock, you know what I'm saying? Anyway, (laughs) welcome to Dr. Mark's Masterclass Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Mark Williams. And I have a special guest, my good friend, Keisha Walker, a legendary Keisha Walker, who is a marketing guru and also the chairwoman and CEO of BCGA. What does that stand for? Founder of Black Collegiate Gaming Association. My friend, what's up? How are you? I'm so excited to be here. Good day. She said, how am I? I, t- I do like my grandma. I'm doing like the Hindu, doing the best I can do. Okay? Yes, yes, <laughs> sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway, that's grandma Opal. 
Anyway, and I got my man Jacoby, one of my former students. I was at the University of Houston as a uh, visiting professor. He was at Texas Southern, and he, man, he is an amazing young man. Now he works for who? BCGA. BCGA. Yes. Yes, and he's over here recording. And we're not going to show everything, but we're showing a little bit. Show him, show him, show him this, this really dope design here from Black College. Tell us about what this is, this design right here, Keish. What, what is this? Absolutely. So we actually have a partnership with uh, Magic Gaming, uh, the NBA, the professional NBA 2K team for the Orlando Magic NBA, uh, the NBA franchise. And we actually hosted an event during Black History Month with their entire team. They did a phenomenal webinar, an NBA 2K tournament, and they had one of the local African-American uh, artists and designers actually create this logo for us uh, for the tournament. And we actually had a chance to have all four of the HBCUs um, in Florida participate in the day. And it was a great talk and tournament. Uh, that supported those HBCUs and Florida Memorial actually won the contest uh, for the most the students, yes. the most the most students to register and participate in the uh, the webinar or the talking tournament that what we hosted. We what do we get for that? A thousand dollars cash. That's what I'm about. <laughs> well, was it cash or was it a check? I don't know. Actually, cash. it was a check. Yeah, with a check. Okay, <laughs> but it wasn't a scholarship or a grant. It was a check. <laughs> it was a check. Yeah, it, the one of those big joints. We didn't get the big cash one picture, you know. But it was it was it was that. Um, but before we get started. Um, you know, we just hopped into talking to everybody about uh, BCGA. Before we talk about BCGA, uh, let me first let everybody know this. First and foremost, um, this particular episode, um, I would say, I wouldn't say historic. Yeah, I would say historic. Uh, Keisha's been on other podcasts before, but I'm a board member of BCGA, a proud board member. And I remember when Keisha came up to me with the opportunity of being on her board um, about BCGA. At the time, there was never, there was not any black organization that really focused and focused on and catered to black students and black colleges the way her organization did in terms of nonprofit. Now you've had um, other organizations that are out there doing some amazing work, okay, um, around black colleges but none really addressed the needs of black colleges in, in full totality as BCGA did. And that's why I didn't hesitate uh, to, to lend my, 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 my support to the organization, but also be a, a mentor in that respect to make sure that Keisha uh, really uh, was, I guess, socialized properly into the video game industry. As many of you know, the video game industry is a $200 billion industry and everyone wants to capitalize on it, especially during the pandemic. Um, during black, during the uh, pandemic, you saw a number of black companies that came out of the woodwork that said, hey, we want to do it too. And we applaud all of them. We applaud all of them. Uh, but one thing that made this unique was that it was a black woman that created this. And I said, how can I not support this? As And, and the other thing is that people don't know about Keisha is that um, this, this woman is a, a marketing guru. So she's been doing this for 25 years plus in terms of really understanding marketing, sports marketing, event management, all around the country from working with Essence Festival, working with the NBA, the NFL, Major League Baseball. She's touched it all. And for someone that wants to get into video games, all she need now, all she needs to do is now understand the industry because she has the marketing and the branding and the partnerships and the, and all those entities. When you have that and you're willing to learn, there's a recipe for success. And I knew she was going to be successful out the gate. And I'm so happy to be affiliated with her. And I, I want to introduce you to her, my, my good friend, Keisha Walker. Keisha, tell us why you wanted to start BCGA and how important was it for you to be the first woman of color uh, to create something like this. Well, thank you. First and foremost, Dr. Mark, you know, I consider you my Diddy Russell Simmons of esports. So the opportunity to be here today for your master class is just phenomenal. I, you know, I, I literally traveled, uh, you know, four hours from on and from Atlanta, <laughs> go figure um, with the weather to get here, but super excited. I'm so honored to be a part of the master class. And I mean, you just continue to, to move and push the envelope. You know, I had a chance to participate last night, you know, quick sidebar, um, in your clubhouse uh, conversation with Matthew Knowles and some of the amazing leaders in the music Dr. industry. Dr. Matthew Knowles. Dr. Matthew Knowles, professor, uh, protect, practitioner just like you. Um, and then the respect that you all have and the, the jewels and knowledge you continue to share and how you always, not you know, you, you reach down and you help to mentor and pull others up. You know, it's, it's just phenomenal to see that the number of people that you touched and had a chance to, uh, had a chance to interact with two legends in the industry like you and, and, and Dr. Knowles, it's just absolutely phenomenal. Um, and, you know, and, and I appreciate your, your, your knowledge, your, uh, more importantly, like you said, your mentorship and more, and your connections. I mean, you've introduced us to and helped to really 
um, bring and take BCGA uh, into uh, the the areas and platforms that uh, I think and believe the organization is, uh, uh, deserves. And so we created the association uh, May 2020. So it's been less than a year. Um, I went home to visit my nephew. He's an 11 year old gamer. He's been gaming for uh, about three years now. My sister, like a lot of single black moms, was concerned about him spending so much time um, during this pandemic on his video game in his room on his on his computer, you know, gaming and and not you know interacting and out playing those traditional sports, uh, you know. And as a five six year old, eleven year old, you know, in a family of traditional sports athletes, you know, she she's been pushing and the family has been pushing him to go to traditional sports, but you know, he's mm-hmm. not interested. Uh, he's a straight A student, and uh, she was concerned about who and he was talking to. She would hear conversations him talking to people on the computer. And I was home for his 11th birthday and she said, you know, I need you to go talk to him. You play video games and creating the Black Collegiate Gaming Association was a full, um, you know, 360 degree moment for me. I started playing video games uh, 35 years ago with the original Atari and mm-hmm. Xbox. Um, I love video games. You know, I was pole position. Pole position. Uh, but that was one of my favorite games. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, pole t- position. So I'm really telling my age, um, you know, and so, uh, you know, what to Galaga? Uh, oh, oh, at Galaga, absolutely. And then, you know, and then the the hard video games on Miss Pac-Man mm. uh, over all over Donkey Kong, all over it. Um, and so, you know, to I went in and, and talked to him to figure out what he was doing to try and give her a comfort level uh, with the time that he's spending around video games. And it was probably the best 45 minutes that I've spent with someone under the age of 18. Mm. And, you know, just to be able to transfer the knowledge, the experience we've had uh, from insights and working with HBCUs over 25 years. I'm a proud two-time graduate of Florida A&M University with both a BS and an MBA uh, from our school of business and industry. And so to be able to sit and talk to him and then listen to him speak about his interests in mm-hmm. esports and gaming. You know, we've gotten some of our celebrity clients on the covers of ESPN video games when, you know, that was around uh, 2K sports, you know, the Madden games. And, you know, so I've been around the, the industry um, in insights, but had not been as engrossed as what he you know, gave me in that 45 minute conversation. Um, we've done celebrity tournaments around you know, Pro Bowl, Super Bowl, and mm-hmm. you know the NBA All Star, Major League Baseball All Star games. But to listen to him talk about wanting to get scholarships and go mm-hmm. to school and play, and until he was old like me, you know, mm-hmm. work in the industry, and then also wanting to play on on the esports teams and mm-hmm. be a professional gamer. Mm-hmm. And as I watched, and, and he started showing me the individuals he was, you know, following, and also the schools where he wanted to go to play. Uh, none of the schools were HBCUs and mm-hmm. our entire family are proud HBCU graduates. Mm-hmm. Um, so my, my brother, sisters, parents. So, you know, it was, it was, uh, you know, I was like, there's something wrong with this picture. It's like, and all the professional gamers you're following, mm-hmm. they don't look like you. And mm-hmm. more importantly, they don't look like me, mm-hmm. you or your mom. And I'm like, that doesn't concern you. And, you know, as an 11 year old, he was like, gamers, we don't see color. We don't care about color. You know, and everybody worked and played with or overseas. And so, you know, and he was like, um, I didn't see any HBCUs that offered scholarships, mm. didn't have gaming, you know, didn't have gaming labs or arenas like these cool schools. They're not offering degrees. He's like, so why would I go to an HBCU? Mm. And I said, that's, that's concerning. I said, especially in 2020 mm-hmm. that we don't have at least a single HBCU out of 97 accredited schools uh, that could provide you with a you know, degree and the opportunity to play. I mm-hmm. said, so I'm going to do something to change that. Um, and with our multicultural background and relationship we've had over 20 plus years or 20 going on 24 years now, work with HBCUs, I'm like, it's, you know, I, I'll, I'll do something to change that. That was May 14th. And, and, how di- and how different is it? Because I'll, see, a lot of people don't understand this. They think that when you're a company that a video game company, you just walk into a college and voila, it happens. HBCUs are a little different. I tell people that if you want to work with an HBCU, uh, the predominantly white colleges, they don't have a curfew. Uh, that's how I I, I, I attribute, I, I kind of create the illusion of what HBCUs are. At HBCUs, they have a curfew. And I don't mean that literally. What I'm saying is that you have to go through uh, the the powers that be in order to get a relationship with an HBCU, like the president's or someone that, in the provost's office, the legal department, or even uh, the board of trustees. That's just how it works at HBCUs. They're not going to do a major deal with anyone and when, until that happens. And so for you, when you decided to create this opportunity, because at the time, there was very few HBCUs that was actually doing this. Um, you know, our school, Florida Memorial, we just, they brought me on board to, to create that. Hampton University was one of the first schools to come out with a major grant a year earlier. Mm-hmm. Um, you had Tennessee State, that was the first school that, that granted, um, I believe, uh, degrees in that for HBCUs. No, that was, that was the first school to do it. Kentucky State. Kentucky State. Kentucky State. And then you also had... Um, Johnson C. Smith is a school that started to emerge and come out and they started doing some things last fall. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Last fall. 
And then, so there really was not a lot, of, there was no one really doing yeah, less it. less than a handful. Right. And then on top of that, you had uh, HBCU heroes. They were doing things about giving back to black college student athletes. With George Lynch and those guys are doing an amazing job there. Um, you also had our group, um, you know, the Alliance, HBCU mm -hmm. Alliance with, shout out to Rob Chappelle and Harry Stinson. Um, and, and, and then you had Isaiah Reese that, that he was doing some things, but no one was really dedicated to HBCU specifically. And um, what what kind of reception did you first receive from people uh, in terms of uh, encouraging you or not encouraging? What was that like? Yeah, well, I reached out to 30 HBCUs that we've worked with over the past uh, almost quarter of a, uh, you know, over two and a half decades. And I started talking to those universities first. And the biggest challenge with HBCUs, especially in the middle of a pandemic, is, do is dollars and finances and being able to support uh, the cost it would take to put not just a lab and program a uh, lab on campus more importantly professors and create an academic program um, for their students so that was the first challenge and then a lot of them didn't have the uh, the, the people resources to mm -hmm. put behind what it would take to develop a program at the, at the campus level so that eliminated a number of the the 30 schools we talked to you know my goal was to have 16 member schools and out of the, those 30 we invited i think 24 mm -hmm. um and initially uh, we had um eight 20 that actually submitted applications and we we took before our advisory board um, and I've got a very, very amazing advisory board um, and some of the best names in and across corporate America, not just in gaming and esports uh, mm -hmm. who are on our advisory board. Can you tell us about some oh, yeah, of the exactly. Are um, so uh, we have um, Daryl Butler uh, from HP. We have Davina Mackey over at PlayStation Sony. Uh, we have Q Gaskins, who is a chief brand officer at the National, National Basketball Players Association. And Q Gaskin is someone also, some people don't know. Q is also responsible for the career of Allen Iverson at Reebok. So he was the person that managed the uh, Allen Iverson brand at Reebok. Um, and he, uh, I didn't work with Q when I was at Reebok, but we, we knew each other, uh, but he was, he's very, one of the most respected people um, uh, in basketball um, and actually in pop culture uh, as we speak. And there's a lot of people behind the scenes that you don't know uh, that you may not have heard of, but that are also influential in their own way. And Keisha is a uh, up to assemble some really unique people. She, uh, continue. I'm sorry. I just oh, wanted yeah. to. Uh, and he, and he also. We go further, we're going to stop here because I want to stop here because you're going to see the full interview um, in the <laughs> next couple, maybe the next month, next couple of weeks. But we wanted to give you a little flavor of what we do up in here at Dr. Mark's Masterclass. So we're going to stop that and end it here, Jacoby, uh, just to give him a little bit. But Thanks, we just, Dr. Mark. We just wanted to give you a little bit, a little something, something. Look, and follow us at, at BCGA USA, please. Across all social media platforms, Twitch and Discord. Perfect. Continue, Keish. Yeah, and so, and, and people don't know too uh, that Q had a lot to do with what you saw uh, last weekend with the NBA All Star Game and celebrating uh, and celebrating HBCUs and all things that are HBCUs. I was glad we were able to, to bring it to a worldwide platform for those people who didn't know what we've known for mm -hmm. uh, cent over a century <laughs> that uh, let the me, power let me of say HBCUs. That, let me say this for you again. Do you remember the All Star Game? And you remember how many HBCUs were represented and how throughout the telecast they kept talking about HBCUs? That's never happened in any professional sports league ever. ever. Who was behind that? Uh, Q Gaskins and his sister right here. Our so story. Did, did they talk about the money air? No. There's a lot of times you don't know who's behind the scenes, but Keisha's been doing this for years. And I just want to make it clear that, again, she is not a fly-by-night person. She is not somebody that just jumped on this and said, let me just jump on this and like, let me get into this esports thing because it sounds cool. This is somebody that's intentional. This is somebody that comes from the, the industry of, of sports marketing and entertainment. It's called relationship building. Okay? I work with, I'll work with anybody all day long in marketing, sports marketing, brand marketing, all day long, and so that that's been in it for five years versus someone who's been in esports or a video game for twenty years and has a bad attitude. Okay, it's about relationships and understanding how to seamlessly put those relations, those non endemic and endemic brands together. And this woman does it better than anybody. And 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 check it out. She's going to tell you a little bit about the companies that she's worked with and have been working with and has gotten BCG, BCG involved with. And when you hear these names, you're going to realize again that it's not just about about your experience, but it's about those relationships and it's about how to use, how to, how, how a marketer can best be utilized in the video game industry. Cause a marketer, if they understand anything, they're going to be successful at it. Okay. So continue Keish. Oh yeah. And then, um, Corey Roseman, I, I consider him like the Jay-Z of the esports gaming industry. Uh, he has been around, you know, almost 30 years in the industry and, and, and is a go-to when it comes to the gaming industry overall and esports, and he's on our board. Um, and then we also um, just recently added, um, and so excited to have uh, Peter Fong 
on our board. Mm-hmm. He has over 30 years of experience in the automotive industry and well-respected uh, and has been on the board at Villanova. Um, so it's great to have uh, his perspective as well. Um, and so we've, you know, we've got a very diverse, very talented board that has provided a lot of great intel and information for us and helped to get us into a lot of the right places and with the right uh, corporations and individuals. So we've been very, very uh, successful there. We currently have uh, 15 HBCUs mm-hmm. uh, and we hope to bring on shortly our first predominantly brown institution mm. and all female institution, uh, Agnes Scott College. I've uh, mm-hmm. been in conversation with them. Mm-hmm. Super excited about that because as a woman of color and the fact that less than half a percent of the industry uh, in corporate and gaming and esports are women of color. Uh, it was definitely uh, something I wanted to do was to make sure we had women represented. And I think Agnes Scott College and, and the amazing women and leadership they have Dr. there. Markeisha Henderson. Absolutely. Yes, yes. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. Um, would, be, would be an excellent fit um, with the BCGA. And, uh, and then we're also uh, in the process of doing some consulting too with St. Francis College mm. in Brooklyn, New York. Oh, nice. Again, another now predominantly brown institution mm. because of the, the makeup of the student body and their interest in esports and gaming. So uh, we have, uh, thanks a lot to you and uh, some of the amazing uh, media and, and contacts relationships that you've helped us build. We've uh, been able to get in front of some amazing people. Um, and I want to thank, you know, Dale Favors. Uh, and the president over at St. Francis College and, and the Stanley and the entire staff there for uh, believing in us and, um, you know, help wanting us to help them uh, come into the gaming and esports space, which is still very new and, and changing. And that's something I tell people, you know, because there was a there were some misconceptions with a lot of our HBC uh, schools that thought they could only work with one organization mm-hmm. uh, to do and to get into the esports gaming space. And that's so untrue because uh, we each have something different that we bring to the table, mm-hmm. different benefits that we offer, you know, and, uh, you know, and our, the conferences are now have esports leagues mm-hmm. and this and are forming teams, you know, and it's, and I, I, I'm so excited about it, but you know, I, I tell anybody there's no regulation here. So do and get involved in as much as you can. And I'm so excited about the partnership we've been able to form with you and the, and and Rod and um, the, you know, the HGA and um, and just super excited about what's to come. Well, I want to pause for a minute and let everybody know you're listening to Dr. Mark's Masterclass Podcast, uh, sponsored by and powered by Innovation Media Enterprise. Aaron and Sia, thank you for holding me down. And AJ on the Wilder Seal, thank you so much. I'm here with my special guest, Keisha Walker, who is the chairwoman and CEO of BCGA. Uh, we're just talking about some of the wonderful things that she's doing. And I, I see you, you're sporting the w, uh, the BCGA uh, you, and you and you got, you know, I guess you were in, I don't know, St. Patrick Day color. Absolutely. It just happens to have but all green. But green is actually, our, green is our color. You yeah, know, and color, I told people, right? you know, green is um, organic. Mm-hmm. Uh, it represents money and the opportunities that exist in the industry. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, you know, I was, I was excited to have that be our primary color for uh, the brand and what we're doing. What else do you have? You have what else do you have around here? Oh uh, yeah, this is my Wakanda necklace. Uh, okay. It's actually a personal air purifier to help uh, as we navigate uh, this world that we live in now okay. with this uh, pandemic that I hope uh, will soon and get vaccinated uh, will uh, will be coming to an end. Um, so um, you know, I'm super excited about that. And and then this is my uh, my company, uh, my my other company logo, Insights Marketing. And we are in our 22nd year. Uh, October oh. this year will be 23 years of business. Thank God and. Um, and like I said, we are the go-to for celebrity sourcing and partnerships, experiential marketing, uh, non-traditional market research, and multicultural DNI uh, training. And let's talk. Let's talk a little bit more about your time at FAMU and your the way that you were able to be socialized in the College of Business. You had an amazing dean there that was uh, innovative, but also one of the most respected deans in the country. But at a, whether it's black schools or white schools or Ivy League schools clearly one of the best deans out there, but also prepared students and prepared other future leaders and professors Absolutely. Um, as far as how to become not only a, an effective marketer, but also a leader in business. What was that like being a student under her tutelage? Oh yeah, it was absolutely. And I was handpicked. I was one of uh, less than a handful of students that were allowed to come and transfer uh, to Florida University. I actually started off uh, at the University of Alabama on a New York Times journalism scholarship. Mm. And I was getting a double major uh, in journalism and business and um, and had seen an article in high school about the sc- school business industry at FAMU. And it is the Harvard of business schools, no question. Uh, and, and Harvard professors and administrators came down and sat 
for hours, days, weeks at a time, you know, modeling and, and trying to understand our program. And they actually took and adopted a lot of the work and curriculum that she created mm. um, and, and development, business development courses and took it back to Harvard. Mm. Um, and they actually, she was actually on the board for the Harvard Business School. Mm. So Dean Mobley was was ground changing, uh, life changing. Uh, she was glass shattering. Uh, and, uh, you know, and I, to, to be able to know her um, and I'm honored to be in her in the Hall of Fame. Mm. She hand wrote a note uh, when I got selected to be in our business school Hall of Fame. Um, and, and just said one of the best decisions I could have made accepting you as a transfer student. Mm. Um, and so and her, her, her knowledge, uh, her mentorship lives on in me. Um, and she made me believe that women can do and be anything uh, mm. that we put our mind to. And I, you know, I attribute a lot of uh, the resources that her God and, you know, and my parents uh, to what and who I am today and to everything that I do today. Wow. Especially a lot of the industry, because a lot of the work I've done is in, primarily male dominated industries. Um, but that has never been a, an issue or a concern of mine. Yeah. So tell us about insight marketing. How did that come about? And what was it, what was it like when you first started uh, 22 years ago in terms of working in the male dominated industry, were you well received? Um, I know you're well received now, but what was it like then? Yes. And I actually um, spent 10 years in corporate America and actually started insights marketing before I left Coca-Cola um, and was in brand management. Uh, and then I decided to walk away from Coke and go full time uh, with insights marketing. And that was, again, an, a great decision to have made uh, and um, enjoyed my you know time at Procter and Gamble. Amazing experience, Amical Oil Company and Coke. And again, those have those corporate uh, and or business relationships uh, in, in some forms to this very day. Mm -hmm. um, but I would definitely have to say, uh, you know, starting out because I worked with athletes you know, in a female and, and an athlete sports, especially professional sports industry is always tough. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I originally wanted to be a sports agent, but figured out there was a lot more financial opportunities going in the marketing side of it and okay. not having to be restricted to just being an agent for certain players, mm -hmm. being able to work across agents. Um, but if, you know, at first with challenge, people always want to question your knowledge. Mm -hmm. um, but when you have a great foundation and you've been able to work with some amazing companies, you've got exactly. that experience behind you. You know, when each of those companies did multicultural work, it was it was very easy to um, one make the transition. More importantly, gain the respect of the industry. Uh, and then we have uh, initial clients like Jerome Bettis, Charles Woodson, you know, Magic Johnson, mm -hmm. you know, and Allen Iverson. It makes it a lot easier mm -hmm. uh, to get into the door of a lot of opportunities. You know, and so and, and still have a lot of those clients. So work with all those clients uh, right. to this day. You know, twenty two years later. Um, so again, a testament of the brand and longevity and being able to be respected in the industry. So what was the transition like when you decided after sitting there talking to your nephew um, and you decided to, to go full force with BCGA, was there a transition period where, where people were not encouraging, uh, especially men? Were they, was it, did that ever happen or did you, did, was it smooth sailing, so to speak? Oh no, it was, it was definitely a challenge um, um, starting out and, uh, what's so interesting is, I, you know, I figured out this was an opportunity for me to to go and still be in a space that I was comfortable with in terms of sports and also to work with HBCUs and, and the multicultural consumer segment uh, with the opportunities that existed there. Uh, and then starting out, you know, I had some people tell me, you, you're you trying to get into a fraternity that you haven't been invited to. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I've never been interested in a fraternity. I'm a proud carrier, Crimson and Cream 1913 DST card carrying member. You know, I had people tell me that I did know gaming and esports, and I, I wouldn't survive in this space. Mm. You know, but again, when you have really great relationships, you've worked uh, with some amazing HBCUs and institutions. You've worked with some amazing people over the years. You know, and they will support and rally behind mm -hmm. you, and also help you. People like you, you'll get give me in the doors. So one good thing that came out of uh, an interesting uh, start was opportunity to meet to meet you, and it's it's such a full circle moment because we had worked with some of the same people, yep. Alan Iverson, Magic Johnson. But it never met. Yeah, it never met directly. Twenty two years, well, twenty five years plus me being in the industry. I knew who she was. Never met her. Um, same here. And we, we're we're in the same circles, but we never met. Um, so when I had the opportunity to meet Keish, um, it was a no brainer for me. Uh, we the first time we talked, we talked for like three and a half, four hours. Absolutely, I yes. Um, and I think the the most important thing that I would say to everyone out there, uh, especially if you're a male uh, or if you're a white male. Or if you're a white female, or whoever you are, if you're not a non-black, if you're a non-black woman, or you're a woman, period, men, we've got to be, we've got to be um, careful about looking at women and and giving the, and saying what they can't do. Okay, uh, women are the ones that created us. Okay, if, the, if a woman can create you, they can do anything. Okay, so absolutely. absolutely. I, so I don't. I've never understood this. Well, you're a girl, or you can't do this because you're a woman, or I'm like, but woman, I, I mean, 
We, my mother, we my mother, would not have life. We would have life for women. Are you Absolutely. kidding me? Men can't have men can't produce women. Can't produce kids. Cannot and that by itself. And then you think about your mother, your sister, your grandmother, your anyone in your family that's a woman. Think about how you would think if someone tried to deny them opportunity. But then when you meet a woman who also is on point and they also have you know a background and and, and an area of which you don't, you don't have or maybe you have it, you encourage them. And that's why it was very easy for me to encourage you. I appreciate um, it. And you already had that. You already had the background. And for me, I tell anyone if they have a background in marketing or if they have a background in relationships, you can you can get into the video game industry because it's not it's not a an industry where people are so mean and they don't want you to get in. If you have something you can share because it's a sharing and complimentary industry, uh, you you're going to survive it. But the fact that you have this amazing background with people, there are people that. The, the people that you know, that you know, that you that you have a relationship with, um, these are people that go and pay for it. They go and they pay to find uh, a relationship with those people or they um, the things that you do for fun. Um, the thing that the thing that other people do for fun, you do for a living. So, Absolutely. So to speak, right. And ex exactly. And we have five platforms and services because what we created and I, I still believe this to this day is game changing. And I think you only one of the only other people who had the vision as well prior to us you know, putting this together in May of last year, we turned everything around in, in, in less than a month mm -hmm. and decided to, to focus on five services, you know, uh, program areas, you know, first and foremost is educating, mm -hmm. educating our students, not just HBCU students, but black college students and women of color students around the opportunities that exist in the industry. Mm -hmm. And it's so much bigger than computer programming and software engineering and game development, mm -hmm. you know, and then secondly is careers. Mm -hmm. We want to get more people to look like us in the space. Mm -hmm. You know, we play the games. We spend a whole bunch of money around the games, but we're not the ones making the decisions in most mm -hmm. companies. You know, I've been talking to a lot of corporations and bringing them on as corporate partners and very seldomly are there women and or brown people mm -hmm. in those rooms making those decisions and, and deciding on the partnerships wow. with BCGA, mm -hmm. you know, and we want to help change that. And so we want to get internship and job opportunities to students you know, and then, the, you know, our third thing is scholarships, you know, our, our especially at our HBCUs and even at, at our PBIs, students need help uh, in terms of staying in school to be able to graduate and then get jobs and work in the industry. Mm -hmm. You know, next is mentorship. Mm -hmm. You know, it, you know, you've got to you can get the jobs, but you need some help staying in the uh, mm -hmm. staying in the industry right. and being able to, to rely on and reach out to individuals that look like you to help you understand how to navigate, you know, the politics mm -hmm. uh, and the day to day work life, uh, you know, things as simple as your salaries and, and job expectations. You know, we want to create and connect those dots and we're doing them with our black college con and women got game and our military play mm -hmm. properties that we've created. You know, and the last thing is our gaming and innovation labs, you know, mm -hmm. especially at our HBCUs and our PBIs, you know, they don't have the resources finances. So we're helping them to build and create those labs. There's dedicated locations. Mm -hmm. So they don't have to just play on gaming consoles and gaming systems and nothing against, you know, PlayStation, Sony, you know, Nintendo, Xbox, you know, but you need to be on gaming PCs to really, if you want to be in esports mm -hmm. and you want to be competitive. And so we want to have and give them exposure to both mm -hmm. systems and more importantly to the industry overall. So you can see all the different opportunities that exist, you know, from graphic design, animation, you know, sound, uh, you know, production, you name it. Mm -hmm. You know, so you've got to have exposure to that to right. be able to, to see and reach and know what you can achieve. And so, hmm. you know, I, I, I'm flattered that, you know, some individuals decided to try and take that and, and, and copy it. You know, but um, if you don't have the background or expertise to do it, do all you, you can do is talk about it. People try to copy your. What oh, you're they to do? did. Really? Absolutely, they did. Wow. Yeah, copied it. You know, and and people always say, you know, <laughs> in, you know, it was intimidation, duplication is the highest flattery. Um, you know, and so uh, you know, the good thing that came out of it is that a lot more HBCUs are getting access to what we developed and what we created. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the sad part about it is that they couldn't come up with and do it themselves. But, you know, there's always a, a, a bright side to every um, Listen, people out there, side moment. Use your own ideas, okay? <laughs> you can be inspired and motivated by other people, but don't be jacking people's stuff, okay? <laughs> come up with your own stuff, okay? I admire what Keisha's doing. I don't do what she does. I do some of the things she does. And we work and we collaborate. Okay? Absolutely. Your collaboration is a key. Not trying to be first and say, we're first. We're the best. Stop it. You're not DJ Khaled. We the best. Stop it. At the end of the day, this is about the students. Giving back to students and creating pathways for them. Um, but let, let's talk about this uh, Black College Con. This this, this this is a really dope logo here. And um, what's interesting about it is when we were discussing on the board, what kind of people did you want to have on the platform to, to talk to the students? You said, I want people that look like them 
to Absolutely. the executive to come talk to them because a lot of the times when you do these events, let me tell you something. A lot of times when you do these conferences around the video game industry, 99% of the time it's usually white men or Asian men and a very few handful of women, okay? You don't see people of color. And if you do see it, you might see a Chris Cheney. You might have seen a Dan Cherry. You might have seen a Davina Mackey, maybe. But you don't see that many people of color in these spaces. And Keisha said, why not bring people of color that actually works in those spaces because there's some that are there and create a, um, a, a, a platform where people of color get a chance to talk to young people of color that are aspiring to be in that space. What made you come up with that concept and idea? Again, it was addressing a need. You know, mm -hmm. the fact that, you know, from listening and talking to a bunch of individuals who've been in the industry for a while, it had not been done. Um, and since started creating history with being the first, um, with creating BCGA, you know, I said, how can we actually make a difference? And how can we address the greatest opportunity that exists, which is one, educating our students on the opportunities. Mm -hmm. And secondly, connecting them the dots to opportunities that exist in the industry. And so a big shout out to Hitmarker. They are a UK based uh, brand and, and, and platform. You know, and they saw what we were doing and they said, you know, we want to make a difference. We need to do a better job of helping our corporate partners diversify in this space. Mm -hmm. And so they've become a, a partner uh, with BCGA and they um, and they've and they've jumped all in. You know, and they're helping us. To, we provide jobs on our website 24 hours a day that mm -hmm. students can go and get access to and visit and, and, and provide and get information on not just internships and job opportunities, but contract project work that they can do right now. Mm -hmm. um, and then we also have a virtual esports job fair coming up on April 22nd mm -hmm. uh, where students will have a chance to talk to 20 plus companies and get mm -hmm. hired. First of its kind. They have never, it's never been done, not just with Hitmarker, but in the industry. Tell There's never been a virtual esports and job fair, gaming tell, job fair. Tell everybody about that. How do, how do people register and yep, get on? Absolutely. So they can go to, uh, they can go to our website, uh, bcgausa.org. They can also follow us at BCGA USA, all social media platforms. And we have, we'll have the information up tomorrow. Oh, wow. Yes. So we're super excited about that. Wow. Yep. Um, that's Thursday, April 22nd, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. It is a free virtual esports and job fair. And we want those corporations to see and interact with students that look like people of color and more importantly, hire and get an opportunity to get them, get in front of them. So uh, please go um, and register. And we look forward uh, to seeing you on April 22nd. And we're also doing on May 3rd, a celebrity game -a -thon. Uh, where well, we're going to have uh, 16 celebrities, one representing each of our schools, uh, play in two tournaments, uh, looking at Call of Duty and Fortnite, and they'll compete to raise money to help our schools build these gaming innovation labs that are not cheap wow. to build out. Um, so super excited about that. Uh, and I, I'm going to have to lean on you because I know you know all the hot celebrities oh, and well, can help well, bring them too. to the table. Well, so. <laughs> so we, we should have a dope event because we both absolutely, know celebrities. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And then with Q Gatskins, oh, it's going to be a trifecta yeah. uh, of celebrities and support. So we're excited about about that event on May 3rd. So we're trying to create different and unique events, again, create history, and more importantly, make an impact and make a difference. And, uh, you know, start bringing some students. We can have success stories this time next year. Yeah. You have first class of, of interns and, and people that have entered into the uh, full-time job industry. So super excited about that. And then we just completed our first historic uh, women of color event called Women Got Game. Again, never been done anywhere in the world. Um, it was a chance for conversations, competitions, connections with women of color. Uh, and across the industry and super excited a full day we've got 49 women confirmed to participate or they participated and I'm to my, I talked about everything from gaming industry esports we had gaming studio executives entrepreneurs and they provided some amazing intel we had over 500 women of color college students participate Wow! Um, and they got a chance to interview for job opportunities they got a chance to meet and network with executives and individuals they've connected with some future and current mentors so it was just a phenomenal experience. And again, another chance to create history. We look forward to bringing both uh, Women Got Game and Black College Con and Military Play back uh, this year and next year. Um, and just and have uh, you know people a chance to connect, again, connecting the dots and educating mm -hmm. and providing career opportunities for those opportunities for people of color. So I know that when you did the Black College Con, that was the 27th of February. I was doing my esports masterclass at Florida Memorial, but I was able to do participate by doing the opening comments. And uh, one of the interesting things was when you first started doing this two day event, you, you're, I think you anticipated maybe a hundred, 200 people. How many people actually registered? Yeah. For a black college town, we over 900 students uh, register. Wow. So it was phenomenal. And I was, I, my goal was 250 students for the first year. Wow. So uh, we, we <laughs> blew that out of the water. So I was super excited. And, uh, and again, very special thanks to GameStop, which is right here in this Dallas area, mm -hmm. um, and to uh, PlayStation as our presenting partners, uh, the huge supporters. Um, and then we also, like I said, Hitmarker, uh, McDonald's, uh, Xbox mm -hmm. Game Studios, 
you know, Rig Gaming uh, and HyperX and Intel for their support of uh, you know of both by college kind of women got game because as a, a new organization, you know they uh, took a risk um, and more importantly believed in what we were doing and saw the saw the you know what we knew we could achieve and they've been more than supportive. I, I was going to ask you that before we go because we 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 don't have we're running out of time. However. We need you to come back. Can you come back? Absolutely. Okay, because we want to learn more about what you're doing. But I think maybe we can save this for the next one. But you kind of give us you kind of gave us a little bit. But what are some of the companies out there that have been not only supportive of you, but supportive of a, a black colleges that you can think, but also BCG in particular? What companies have you that you look at and you say that company is really serious about promoting uh, black colleges, but also uh, really creating pathways for black college students? Yeah, shout out first and foremost to Sony uh, PlayStation. You know, they have agreed to come on as uh, one of our Titanium corporate partners. And more importantly, they're they're actually going to outfit our 16 member schools. And we're one of them. Yes. For Memorial. Yes. And so on, and I'm talking about not just game, not just PlayStations, but they're providing, you know, TVs, uh, projector systems, you know, and more importantly, uh, talent and resources to help our students understand and navigate the tech, you know, technical energy, gaming and esports industry. Uh, so super excited about that. GameStop as well. You know, GameStop provide all 16 of our schools, you know, with gift cards so they could purchase accessories and things they need. Uh, Rig Gaming provided gaming, he- brand new gaming headsets to all 16 of our member schools. So the students have the best uh, equipment and accessories. So the, again, they're able to navigate the system, get educated and learn more about all the overall gaming industry. So we're super excited about you know, just those, um, you know, three companies alone. And I'd already mentioned what Hitmarker is doing with, uh, you know, with our esports job fair and then the job page they offer on our website. Mm, wow. Well, my friends, uh, you've been listening to Keisha Walker, the chairwoman and CEO of BCGA, president of Insight Marketing. Uh, just an amazing time. I mean, we went through this in 40 minutes and I'm like, <laughs> and we have more time that we, I wish we had more time. Um, as you can tell, she's a breath of fresh air, full of knowledge. Uh, also got to thank Innovation Media Enterprises, Aaron and Sia. Thank you again for holding me down. Yes, Always uh, AJ, sound engineer, beautiful job. Once again, uh, Jacob Miles is our hero, the man that created this whole entire opportunity. And again, uh, we will definitely have another exciting episode for you. We're going to bring Keisha back at some point. Keisha, can you once again tell everybody how they can reach you and uh, what uh, and what other big events you have coming up soon. Absolutely. Please follow us, Insights Marketing, uh, at Insights MPC. That's I-N-S-I-G-H-T-S MPC across all social media platforms. And please follow BCGA at, at BCGA USA. That's BCGA USA on all platforms, including Twitch and Discord. Uh, again, coming up, we've got the um, the virtual job fair, April 22nd. We've got the Celebrity Game Mathon on May 3rd. And then we're getting ready for our summer festival in New Orleans. Uh, Essence will be virtual, but we will be in New Orleans for the weekend. And then we'll start our fall football season. Don't minimize uh, that. Tell everybody what you do with Essence, please. Oh, wow. This is, uh, again, wow, 25 years. This will be 26 years of producing some of the largest events and activities. We do everything from brand activations, uh, market research, celebrity sourcing and partnerships on the biggest stages um, in the festival um, in the marketplace and then we also produce uh, some signature properties each year our, our probably our most well-known event is the all-white affair where we have over 5,000 people each year uh, celebrating with us uh, and everything we do is with the purpose and we always give back to the greater local New Orleans community well again uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm honored and privileged to call Keisha a friend but also a colleague as well and um, we were really excited about what BCGA is uh, thank you for what you've done. Thank and you, thank Dr. You, Mark. Thank you to your nephew and your <laughs> sister for believing in, in creating something like this. If it wasn't for him, Absolutely. Uh, we probably would not have really moved forward. We needed people like you. And I'm hoping and praying, and I'm, I know this is going to happen, that you're going to be encouraging a young, another young black girl uh, to to want to create something like this. Or maybe in, in young black boys and every, young white boys as well and white women and other uh, nationalities. I don't know. But uh, you're definitely an innovator, and we're thankful to have you. Thank you so much for Thank what you've you done. Thank you for today. I appreciate it. Yes, I look yes. forward to coming back. Yes, we look forward to having her back. And again, you've been and listening to- And coming down to, to FMU. Uh, hey, <laughs> yes, and coming down to FMU very soon, too. Yes, and uh, looking to get outfitted uh, with Sony PlayStation. Thank you, Davina Mackey and PlayStation. And, Thanks, um, Davina. Thanks, and, Grace. And Briggs Gaming. Yes, to Corey and A5, and he's a member of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. So- Again, thank you so much for everything. Uh, Florida Memorial, thank you again for bringing me on to be your scholar, global scholar practitioner. Uh, Dr. Hardrick, Dr. Cooper, thank you for believing in me. 
Uh, again, shout out to all the folks here. Uh, and we are looking forward to another great episode. But remember, I tell you all the time, you can control three things. Three things you can control. That's it. Three things. You can't control anybody else but yourself. You can control three things. What you think, what you do, and what you say. Remember that. What you think, what you do, and what you say. On that note, have a blessed day, a blessed evening, a blessed night. However you're listening to this platform, we see you soon. Peace. Thanks for listening to Dr. Mark's Masterclass. I pray you enjoyed yourself today. I had a good time. I don't know about you, but this podcast is part of the Esports Future Eye Podcast Network and is produced by Innovation Media Enterprises. Please be sure to subscribe on your favorite podcast channel and let us know how we're doing by leaving a comment or a review. Class dismissed.